Hey guys and gals, this is Alden at themossandcrate.com and today we're going to be comparing Russian and German high explosive and armor piercing incendiary rounds that snipers used on the Eastern Front during World War II. These were originally used by aircraft machine guns, but snipers quickly found a use for them. And the first rifle is a 1944 Shevsk PU sniper rifle. This is an original Mosin Nagant, Mosin Nagant, for the correction Nazis out there, sniper rifle from World War II, which will pair nicely with the 1944 high explosive armor piercing rounds we have. Next up is a German K98K from 1942. This is a BCD AR. And it is a ZF-41 sharpshooter's rifle, and it is a Russian capture. I actually have a video on the German high explosive rounds from about four years back. It's got 1.3 million views now on YouTube, so be sure to check that out. This video, however, we're going to be comparing full metal jacket rounds to the high explosive German rounds and the armor piercing incendiary that the Russians would use in 762 by 54 r First off, the 8mm and the standard full metal jacket. This one here happens to be a Turkish 8mm from 1943. And the next round we're going to be using, which is the high explosive round, a B Patron round, is an original German high explosive round from World War II that the Yugoslavians recased or uh, reloaded into their own case. But it is the original German round. And it actually has a little firing pin on the inside of the projectile, on the, on the inside of the bullet. And when it hits something hard enough, it sets off the explosive in there. And you'll notice throughout the video that I will be loading the API and HE rounds directly into the chamber. I know there's going to be someone that's going to be upset that you can you can damage the extractor that way. I don't want to damage me by just risking the bullet hitting the front of the chamber and setting one of these rounds off. That would not be good. So I will be loading the HE and API directly into the chamber for my safety anyways. These are very old and probably unstable rounds. I've heard of a couple of these going off when they've been shipped or just handled and it's nasty. Uh, these things, they there's a pretty big flame ball and metal going everywhere. So, yeah. This is the 1944 Russian API round. So you can see it has the red and black band on the top of the bullet. So these are extremely rare and very expensive. And all, I spent about $600 in the ammunition and material to make this video. And since YouTube has demonetized my gun channel, I won't be making that back anytime soon. So please consider subscribing in lieu of donations. Uh, this really helps me get in the swing of doing videos like this in the future. Thanks for listening, and let's get out to the range. So this is not a scientific test by any means. It's just for fun. Got some hams, helmets shooting at uh, AR-500 steel target, but I did want to demonstrate what the difference would be by getting hit by a full metal jacket ball ammo versus an API round or a high explosive incendiary round. As you can see, AP, uh, the full metal jacket goes right through the ham with no issues. The API round didn't even go off, and I think that's because the ham was not hard enough. It really had to hit the steel or bone or some sort of metal, something hard to set it off. I do think the B Patron, the 8mm high explosive incendiary, did go off. 
but because the API would not go off with just the ham, I decided we'd add the helmet. I actually got these helmets off of Mike'sMilitaria.com. These were in really ratty shape, but they were perfect for our demonstration, and they, as you can see, set off the API round. This is extremely close to what the Russian helmets would be from World War II, but obviously at a lot lower price. I think I ended up paying about $10 a piece for these helmets, so... Big difference from the full metal jacket, for sure. And now we'll try that with the 8mm. And that exit wound there is from the 8mm B Patron incendiary round. So as you can see with the watermelons, if the full metal jacket hits it, it does quite a bit of destruction. It looks exactly the same as an API round or the HE round hitting it, except you're not going to see those fireworks that you would with the API round. This one I did not think went off, but further looking at it later, and I'll do a slow-mo here in a couple moments, it actually did go off. But I think the bullet itself traveled downward and did not hit the back of the helmet. And the B Patron obviously had no issues whatsoever with the helmet. Definitely not something you're going to get hit with. And I, I wouldn't get want to get hit with a full metal jacket, but if you get hit by that, you're not getting up. There's my very professional setup, as you can see. Spared no expense. Notice the API cuts right through it like butter. Just leaves a hole, doesn't even knock it down with just one support. So those, I, I can't imagine, maybe... A quarter, a three quarters of an inch or an itch, inch thick of AR500 steel, it'd, it'd go right through it. These are pretty thick steel plates, and you can see the standard full metal jacket and the HE round did nothing to it, just dinged it, but that API round, that Russian API, went right through it. So these videos are pretty costly to do and with YouTube demonetizing the channel uh, they're pretty much done for entertainment purposes for my subscribers so if you're not a subscriber yet and you enjoyed the video please consider clicking that subscribe button and visit the website the Moss and Craig I have a ton of really neat items on there from World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam pretty much everything you can imagine is on the website and again, that's the mossandcrate.com. Again, a shout out to Mike's Militaria for getting hooking me up with these helmets for the video. And if you have any questions or comments, just feel free to post them. Thanks for watching, guys.